Previously on The Code, Life with the Mariners. We implemented a new playing system this year. Arnie wanted to re-challenge the players and the staff. Matty, Tommy, congratulations. Soccer in selection. The Mariners have given me an opportunity to play and I'm very thankful for that. You're a great one v one, so you can still face him, you can bang and shoot. How you going champ? What's your name? Evan, nice to meet you mate. I'm the sign for you. We've got to put your belt on, here. Big belt for Patrick, Ooh. new belt. He's getting on in years. Testing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, one, two. One hundred seven point seven two G O. Every Saturday we do the locker room, and thanks for joining us, Steve Allen and Michael Butner. How important are two Socceroos? That is the question this weekend. The Central Coast Mariners take on the top of the table Adelaide United Football Club, coached by John Cosmina. Make sure you're at Blue Tongue Central Coast Stadium this Saturday. A little bit later in the show, we'll talk to Phil Moss, the Mariners' assistant coach, and also Laurie McKenna, live on the locker room on 2GO. Despite the weekend win against Brisbane, it's back to the same meticulous procedure come Monday. Are you kind of coming in to draw him? Yeah, I'm, I'm coming, but if I've got space, I'm going to my shoulder. Yeah. I've got space. I was kind of like point to my feet. Yeah. So pretty much what you see there is what they do in when they're playing out from the back. The two front men have to look after the back three like they did very well against Brisbane. And if anything, if you can't get across, let him carry it. In transition again, wide open playing out. Hutch and Monty, I want you to stay more in midfield. We'll go through it now. If the weather cools down a little bit, we'll go to three times ten minutes. If it doesn't, three times twelve. Otherwise, we'll cu uh, cut it down to about three times eight. So we're saving our legs for Saturday night. With strategy in place from the head coach, the session finishes with set-piece practice. A chance for the goal scorers to put their skills to work. But pushing the body to its limits is best kept for game day. Oh, oh shit. Oh. <laughs> you right? Huh? Nilo! Drive it in. <sighs> Parking. Come on. Six yards out. He's hurt his ankle again. What are you talking about? The one where you killed the koala? <laughs> that was one. I didn't do one. The one over there. there. I didn't do one there. Yeah, yeah, that one did. Went over. Back in the sheds, Bernie Abini has been found guilty of kicking two balls out of bounds. John Hutchinson is captain, judge, and executioner. <laughs> it was at least five. I gave him five dollars. That's that fair. That's fair, huh? Two fifty for each of them. There was only one. The, yeah, the one where you killed the koala. That was one. And only saying that you killed the kookaburra. What the hell? Why did you kill two? That was one. There was only one. Okay, five dollars. <laughs> Where's your other song? Where's your other song? <laughs> One song, Juki. I don't know where it is. A sore ankle does not spare Mitchell Duke from similar hijinks. I didn't have it! You were! The session finishes as it started with routine. A routine that has no place for high performance recovery unit or five star dining. The surroundings are humble, but they are effective. After all, this will soon be the number one football team in the A League. They are the Mariners. And this is the code.
Hey, how you doing? Yeah, good. So. Approximately one kilometre south of the training grounds, the Mariners' cramped administration office tackles its big league responsibilities. One of these is community engagement, a task that by definition and practice binds a club together. In a region with a demographic as intimate as the Central Coast, community comes first. I think when we came up here with a bunch of players we assembled on the coast, it was guys that we knew would could blend into the community up here because we made the decision early it was going to be a community club because of the area. We knew it wasn't a country town and we knew it wasn't a big city so we had to be in the middle. That's where it was important with the players getting out in the community and the, and the players becoming heroes to the local kids. You know, it was very important to get into the hearts and minds of the young ones. And we had to be accessible and uh, we got guys in that the first 20 players were all guys who um, come in and blend it into the place and became part of it, which we did. And um, I think from that day on, it, it's just continued to be the same. Despite being the only professional sports team on the Central Coast, the Mariners do not take this position for granted. And with over 300,000 residents in the region, they work hard to engage with fans, communities and schools at every opportunity. I think from a community perspective, um, we've been um, pretty full on from the, uh, day one. Um, you know, we're, it's been instilled in us with uh, Laurie McKenna, uh, our previous head coach and uh, general manager of football, and, and of course our uh, CEO, John Mackay, um, that uh, you know, community is what we're all about, that's what we want to be known for. And I think we have uh, achieved that uh, in the eight years uh, that the Mariners have been around. When I call out two teams, you come in the middle and you're going to play a game and try and score. One such initiative, through their partnership with Newcastle Permanent Building Society, has enabled the excitement of the Mariners' experience to be presented to over 10,000 children and over 75 primary schools on the coast so far. That's what it's all about, it's getting out there, learning a little bit about the game, um, developing motor skills and um, just having fun. Each year, Foundation Mariners player Damien Brown delivers the Mariners Active program to kids on the coast. It engages the children in, uh, in soccer, offers them opportunities firstly to uh, learn, develop skills around soccer and also to learn more about uh, the Mariners and the role they have in our, in our community, but certainly giving them an experience. Boys and girls all get an experience to uh, play some soccer. We're getting very close to knocking off every single uh, primary school on the Central Coast, which is, um, which is fantastic. Did you have fun? Yeah! Oh. Newcastle Permanent have um, put in over $500,000 know, to, to support the uh, Central Coast Mariners active program. Something like that is, is a huge investment. I think it's really good and fun. I like just kicking the ball around. Any, any activity, it makes difference to the children. We love that as part of our physical activity program. And it also gives the children an opportunity to be more part of the Mariners. Love the Mariners. Love the Mariners. This is the local uh, cockatoo, and we call it Pete. He's always, he announces when he's coming and screams a lot. And he visits us in the morning and in the afternoon, so he's got regular schedule times as well. Man. I think he's going to be a bit too, uh, too fancy for this bird. Huh? My day is really relaxed, um, having breakfast in the morning, but not at a particular time. Come back home and um, I watch a movie or put on television and just relax till the, uh, the time comes that we have to leave and be prepared for the game in the stadium. Due to the age, I've uh, got a lot of experience with all the games and I'm not that nervous anymore. I'm more thrilled to play the game and try to get a good result. Patrick Zvansvike is a football journeyman. But he isn't the only one who has lived a nomadic uh, lifestyle. 9-11, son of nine and a daughter of 11, who lives in Japan as well. And then um, back to Holland, and uh, from Holland we now here, two and a half years. And they love it, uh, they speak English fluently at the moment. So. So the kids have the final say, if they want to go back for uh, friends and study and whatever, then we go back. If they want to stay, I'm happy to stay, I love it. His family are returning to Holland to visit relatives. But before leaving, 
who decides to give them an adventure high and to test his own bravery. Alrighty team, so welcome to Treetop Adventure Park. My name's Scotty. If you have any questions about anything, please ask me. We are going to do a dangerous activity today. It is a high risk. However, the processes, the gear, and instructions that we go through minimise those risks. If it's a bit hard for me to reach these, what I can do, pull down on my rope, hold the knot, same again, onto the red one. Now, if you're feeling brave, this one is hands-free. Really, really important, this one. Stop, avoid collision. Yeah, well done, Anja, relax. You got all the time, huh? Three, two, one, here we go, mate. Let's see if the adventure is a blast. Oh, shit, it's already good. Look how far this is. No, Dad, it's the best. Is it clear? Clear. Woohoo! Oh, is this no hands one? Jesus. We got the wiggle. How do you do this without a rope? What is this? This is like a giant fishing net. That's a good thing, there's no sharks here, huh? It's fun, it's, it's got everything that you want as it, with your kids, with your family. It's, uh, and also in, on a hot day like today, it's, it's still perfect because it's 32 degrees and then it feels like it's 20 here. Man, I'm bad in skateboarding. I fell once and I never tried again. No, mate, it looks good. Let's try if we can do this. Oh, <laughs> oh that was almost, that was closer. It's rare that we have some time off and, and to spend it with the family like this, but if we have, and you can spend it in, in these kind of surroundings, in this area, with the adventure that is all, gives you to, yeah, to explore, it's, it's amazing. And yeah, we can't, we can't wish for a better day. And uh, weather-wise, Adventure-wise, everything has been perfect so far, and the thrill seeker is coming up with the 70 meters uh, flying fox. So uh, that's going to be a nice ending of the day. Clear. Spider-Man is hooked on. Come on, Dad. What's the girl's name? Who's my date normally? I am Mary Jane. Mary Jane, I'm coming. <laughs> The Dutchman is in the twilight years of his career, one of several Mariners players aged in their mid-thirties. His central defending skills and experience are compensating for ageing knees, but with over 400 professional games on his football resume, it is courage that keeps his engine running. And courage is what he needs as he makes his way down off the treetop's most difficult black run. What the hell is this one? <laughs> they haven't told me anything about this one. <laughs> you have to hold on. <laughs> All right, we can do this. Oh. Whoa! Shit. How does it get? Oh. If you're under six foot three, you can't do it. Don't try this at home, I'd say. What's the? Uh... Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> oh. Not a good idea. I knew I wasn't meant to be in the circus. Ready? I'm not. What do I do now? 180. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, the rope's stuck. Ah, uh, oh, woo! <laughs> I need to go to beauty salon. I felt like a monkey who couldn't even climb a tree. But it was amazing. I, uh, yeah, I'll definitely go here with my family again where you get time off. But I probably won't do the black one that quick again. Champ, you right? With his feet both firmly on the ground and his family back in Holland, reality kicks in the moment Svansvike's car enters Blue Tongue Stadium. Hello, how are you going? Hello, are you? Clocking in for work starts with the arrival at the ground. 
Clocking out will be done in three hours' time when the job is complete with a win and three points on the board. Well, mate. Once they went to two and you passed it to Sainz, Sainz back to you, Hussiems went there, then Sanchez comes to Graham Arnold's credentials are well documented, his pedigree unchallenged, and in the Mariners' environment, the fuel in a well-oiled coaching machine. Oh, Tommy walks. His arms swing more than his legs. It's because he's happy. Mum and Dad are well. Are they coming up for any of the games? News? Yeah. At home? For every game here. I did it? Every single game. But like all leaders, mediocrity is rarely accepted. Just worried about this being a little bit too lax going into the tactics. Yeah. Yep. Play. Two go in. One touch. Two. Three. Four. Alani's very meticulous. Uh, I've had a lot of managers in my time, but he takes everything to the nth degree. You know, he likes to make sure we know everything inside out, whether it's our team or the opposition. I think he's got great managerial skills. He's got great people skills. He's very easy to talk to, which is, which is good for someone like me because I, I find it hard talking to people. He's always willing to listen. He's always willing to give advice. And I think that's what helps make him the, the coach that he is. Play! Drop hatch, drop! Open out, Sainz! Sainz, Ray! He's a very good coach and a, and a great guy. If you're good to him and you do all the right things and you're good by the club, he'll stand by you 100% and I feel that we have a really good working relationship. Guys, how hard's that to chase? Eh? Eiffel, mate, pitch. All day, mate. All day. I think he knows he gets the best out of me when he um, is on top of me and I probably agree with that. And which is the best thing for the team, obviously, if I can perform to the best I can. It can be heated, I guess, at times, but at the same time, with a smile. And if it doesn't come off, then you're too far to recover, haven't you? He's very knowledgeable. He's been fortunate to be um, around some of the best people in the world, and he's very generous that he gives us everything that they've given him and more. Final third. Match day, everything comes with the intensity and the adrenaline. You know, I'm very big on uh, man management, uh, psychology, uh, knowing how to get the best out of each individual. On the tactical side of it, I'm a, a student of the game. I'm always trying to learn. I'm watching, you know, big teams on how they play. You know, I've been to visit Wayne Bennett and uh, you know, Timmy Sheens in, in rugby league and uh, Rodney Ead a few years ago. And it's where you can learn a lot off other coaches, even though the rules are different and the game is different. But uh, the philosophy on Coaching is pretty much that you, you, you're trying to get the maximum out of each individual. The process always has to be about the team. The team is the most important thing. Good boy, Bernie. I like it. But Graham Arnold is not a robot. He is a character, a personality that football desperately craves. His generosity, however, is often unseen, but his advice never unheard. Yeah, head. F off, Macca. Hey! Out! Oh! Yep! Ah! Ooh! Yeah! Boy! Boo! Oh!
Despite the highly structured nature of Arnie's coaching methodology, there is one variable he has no control over. Up in front, close up, up in front, get him up in front. Get off. Get off. Off. Come on. Off. Off. Over there. Come on. Off. Stanley is a recent addition to the Arnold household and the new unofficial mascot at the centre of excellence. He is a reminder that in the high stakes environment of professional sport, there is room for a little light hearted fun. The beautiful game is not in itself just about the football. It is the colour and the passion that envelops it, and the personalities that live its creed. The Mariners lead the league in more ways than just points on the board. Their execution of excellence belies its size and resources, but being first also means being chased. And at the top of the F3, the Newcastle Jets are waiting in another football adventure for the Central Coast Mariners. Next time, on The Code, life with the Mariners. You know, it's great to see now, seven years um, down the track, that how much the Mariners have grown and how much they've become a household name in the community. Uh, personally, very good for getting a double goal like that, but um, even more pleasing than the fact they've got the three points and a clean chance still top of the table. Nick has excelled since he's been here. He just loves it. He joke saying that he should have always been an Aussie because his favourite food in the UK was banana bread and it's sold here in every shop that we go to. Now we've got a target on our back. Everyone wants to beat us. So tomorrow night it starts. Whole new chapter. Round nine is done. <laughs>